On Friday, a jury uh, in Minnesota um, found police officer Geronimo Yanez uh, innocent of all charges. Um, he was charged with second degree manslaughter and endangering the safety by discharging a firearm in the shooting. He was found not guilty on all charges. The verdict came out late Friday afternoon. There were 12 jurors uh, and uh, Mr. Castile's mother, Philando Castile's mother, Valerie, uh, said that she, you know, she had a lot to say. Um, and uh, instead of me describing it, let's let her say it. I'm so disappointed in the state of Minnesota. My son loved this state. He had one tattoo on his body and it was of the Twin Cities. The state of Minnesota with TC on it. My son loved this city and this city killed my son and the murderer gets away. Are you kidding me right now? We're not evolving as a civilization. We're devolving. We have taken steps forward. People have died for us to have these rights. And now we're devolving. We're going back down to 1969. Damn, what is it going to take? I'm mad as hell right now. Yes, I am. My first born one son died here in Minnesota under the circumstances just because he was a police officer that makes it okay oh now they got free reign <laughs> he's found innocent on all counts he shot into a car with no regard to human life and that's okay thank you minnesota valerie castillo put it better than anyone else can or could um, he, Philando loved his city and his city killed him. <clears throat> so after he was pulled over and this, this goes back to the details. This is, this is what's frustrating, um, uh, about this, um, that he was pulled over, um, and he was asked if he had a gun. He declared, yes, I have a gun. And he had a license to carry that gun. And yet and still, the officer who knew he had a gun, who knew he had a license to carry the gun, and was told, I'm reaching for my ID, like you asked, found a way to be afraid, despite the fact of having a little girl in the background and, and, and his girlfriend driving the car, felt as though Philando Castile was an imminent threat enough to open his op to open fire. So one of the main questions, according to New York Times, one of the main questions of the case was whether Yanez had legitimate reason to believe that Castile was reaching for a gun that he declared he had after he was pulled over. And this is what the caller, last caller mentioned, New York, Diamond Reynolds, the girlfriend who, who Facebook streamed it. And unfortunately, I mean, most of us, a lot of us saw it. We saw it happening real time, um, the aftermath, uh, because she streamed. And, and after she streamed it, she said that, you know, in, in court, she said that he reached for his license, his identification. But this is exactly where the defense attorneys attacked him because she couldn't, she got it mixed up. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, let's, let's take a pause here. It, doesn't it stand uh, to reason that in the moment like that, in a moment like that where your boyfriend has been shot in front of you, laying there dying if not already dead, and your daughter in the background crying, and you're crying, so much so that your daughter has to console you and say, it's okay, mommy, I'm here, I'm here. Doesn't it stand to reason that it's possible that Diamond uh, Reynolds would not remember that correctly or would remember it in both ways or would remember it in, in all. And because she was not consistent with whether or not the, the license was on one side and the license was on the other side, this was this created the benefit of the doubt or the uh, reasonable doubt necessary for Yanez to get off. And that was just part of it. The other part of it was, did he has, had a, have, did Giannis have a reasonable uh, fear? Did, was, it, was his fear and his suspicion reasonable? And now it goes back to the same 
the same question that we discussed before. Can there actually ever be justice when people who are ostensibly a jury of your peers have, are the, they are unable to look at a black person and give them the benefit of the doubt or even see them with some basic humanity while they look at a police officer, no matter what the police officer did, and they're able to look at that police officer as though they are the hero. As long as officers, and this is not, this is not a one-off. This happens time and time and time again to the point, to the point where it's, it's, almost, it, it's almost in our best interest not to get angry about these anymore because it's happening so damn frequently. And if we keep getting angry about it, it's gonna just keep wearing us apart and tearing us down. There's a, a preacher, a preacher from, uh, uh, from Ferguson, 34 year old preacher. He was a part of all of the protests in Ferguson, died of a heart attack last week. This stuff weighs you down. I'm getting to the point where I just refuse to get angry about it anymore. I can't afford to get angry about it anymore because it's happening so often. And not only is it happening so frequently, we're not getting convictions. Hell, in some cases, we can't even get a damn indictment. And there's, a, there's a meme going around that shows you how many um, convictions we did not get. And I, I now, I, when you hear it, I didn't even write down all the names. I only wrote down a portion of the names so I could do a little bit more research on them. But when you hear it, and you should see why black people are afraid and pissed off. Philando Castile had a license to carry, informed the officer that he, was, he had his gun and that he was reaching for his ID, killed by Officer Yanez, no conviction. Terrence Crutcher, walking away, put his hands up, Killed by Betty, Sh Betty Jo Shelby, no conviction. Sandra Bland, pulled over for a busted taillight or an improper signal. Physically assaulted by the officer, later found dead in her jail said no conviction. Eric Gardner, killed by an illegal chokehold by Daniel Pantaleo, no conviction. Michael Brown, gunned down in the streets of Ferguson by Darren Wilson, and with the help of the district attorney there in Ferguson, who did everything he possibly could to help Wilson get off, not only did, was there no conviction, but there wasn't even a damn indictment. Rakia Boyd, no conviction. Sean Bell, no conviction. 12-year-old Tamir Rice playing in the park with his sister, and after two seconds from entering the scene, not taking a moment to ascertain the situation at all, two Ohio police officers shoot and kill 12-year-old Tamir Rice. And we couldn't even get a conviction because we couldn't get a damn indictment. Freddie Gray, no conviction. Oscar Grant III, no conviction. John Crawford III, no conviction. Trayvon Martin, no conviction. Walter Scott, mistrial, because one of the jurors couldn't find his, in himself to, 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 to say that Officer Michael Slager was guilty of shooting a man in the back eight times. And we have video of him getting shot in the back eight times. No conviction because of a mistrial. And you wonder why we are so passionate about this. And you wonder why we're so upset about this. We're upset about this because the entire system is broken. Actually, let me correct myself. It's doing exactly what it was designed to do. And it's designed to protect police officers. And the police officers are designed to protect property and capital. They're not there to design. They're not designed to protect and serve us. They're here to protect and serve the interest that run America. And yet and still, time and time again, we're told that we're just being hyperbolic. We're told that we're just exaggerating. We're told that we're just making blatant statements and we're race baiting. And at the same time, we're being called race baiters. Someone else is getting shot and killed. Today, a woman, pregnant woman, shot and killed by police officers after, being, after calling them for help. And you want to tell us that we're exaggerating this. You want to tell us that we're making things up. 
And you want to tell us that that, oh, not all police officers are racist who no shit, Sherlock. We know that not every single police officer in America is racist, but we do know that the that the system has racism so intertwined in its institutions that it becomes inseverable from the police officers. So that no, Johnny Boy Jr. doesn't have to be racist, but the way the system is structured and the way they interact with the black community and the way the criminal justice system interacts with the black community, it's all corrupt. It is all racist. And he could be a sterling, perfect police officer, but he's participating in an institutionalized system of racism that has been abusing and killing in the black community for a long time. And for everyone who thinks that it's going to stay in the black community, believe this. As soon as they get done with the black community, they're coming to your community next.